While the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us pledge allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful to a land so fair as we raise our voices in a solemn prayer. Take your Bible this morning, if you would, and turn to Proverbs chapter 14, please. Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs 14. One verse that we're going to read together this morning. Proverbs 14 and verse number 34. Proverbs 14 and verse number 34. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And let's read verse 34 together. Ready? Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Let's read it one more time, shall we? Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing to the reading of this scripture here this morning. And Lord, we thank you already for the wonderful music we've heard. Thank you, Lord, for the message that is contained in the songs that we've sung. And, Father, we would ask you now that you would continue to prepare our hearts, make us ready to receive the truth from your word this morning. Lord, we trust that you'll give us all ears to hear what you would want to say to us today. I pray that you'll bless the special now, and it will continue to make us ready to put our heart in tune with your heart that we'll hear what you, what you have to say to each of us this morning. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Christ the Lord.
Our Father in heaven, we bow before you in prayer now. We thank you again, Lord, for the good music this morning. We thank you again for our country and for what you have done in the United States of America. And Lord, I pray that what you have yet to do in our country. And Father, I'm praying now for your help as we open up your word and we bring the message for the morning. Lord, I realize that a little different dynamic here this morning with all the children in with us today, and I pray you'd uh, help them to listen carefully as to what they could hear and what they could learn uh, about their country and about what God can do in our land. And so, Lord, I pray you'll help me as I bring the message and help each one as they listen. Most importantly, Lord, meet with us. Speak to hearts as only you can do. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning on this subject, Can America Be Great Again? We had a president who got elected on the slogan, Make America Great Again. And uh, the, 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 what, what you never really heard defined was, what does that mean? Uh, how does that work? Uh, what does it look like when, um, when, when you say America can be great again? What does, it, what, what does that look like? Uh, how can America be great again? You know, I read again this week the words of Alexis de Tocqueville, who visited a great French leader who visited the United States in 1831. And he wrote these words, In the United States, the influence of religion is not confined to the manners, but it extends to the intelligence of the people. Christianity, therefore, reigns without obstacle by universal consent. I sought for the key to the greatness and genius of America in her harbors, in her fertile fields and boundless forests, in her rich mines and vast world commerce, in her public school system and institutions of learning. I sought for it in her democratic congress and in her matchless constitution. But it was not until I went into the churches of America and heard her pulpits flame with righteousness did I understand the secret of her genius and power. He wrote, America is great because America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. Now, uh, Solomon said about, about the same thing, only he put it this way. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Now often on patriotic days, preachers are prone to take some texts from the Bible that in reality were meant for Israel, and we kind of apply them to America. Uh, sometimes uh, out of context. But this passage, this verse, would certainly apply to any nation. And it certainly would apply to our nation. For righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So certainly that would include the United States of America. You know, history, history is littered with destroyed nations and empires who did not heed this admonition, who did not listen to the words of the wise man Solomon declared that, that he declared here in Proverbs 14. Can America be great again? I would say yes, if number one, we return to righteousness. You know, you rarely hear that word righteousness maybe only in church and sometimes not very often there anymore <coughs> righteousness you're not going to hear a politician utter it you're not going to hear the mayor of Columbus utter it you probably won't even hear the governor of Ohio utter it not the senators not the representatives and certainly you're not going to hear it from the media you see righteousness implies a sovereign righteousness if there's righteousness, there must be a sovereign that determines what righteousness is. In other words, it's not up to everyone to decide on their own. 
It isn't up to everybody doing what they think is right in their eyes. There has to be a standard. Uh, take your Bible with, me, with you this morning and look at some scriptures with me. Let's start in the book of Psalms and look at Psalm 50. Psalm 50. And notice with me verse number 6. Where the Bible says, In the heavens shall de declare His, what church? Righteousness, for God is judge Himself. Selah. Anytime you see that little word Selah in the Psalms, it means stop and think about it. It's, a, it's literally, most of you know the Psalms was the song book of Israel, and it means a rest. And, and so it means you stop there, you pause there. And so whenever you're reading the Psalms and you come to that little word Selah, it means God's saying, why don't you pause for a minute and think about what you just read. Okay, uh, The heavens declare His righteousness for God is judge himself. And then look at Psalm 71. Psalm 71 and verse number 19. Psalm 71 and verse 19. Notice again. Thy righteousness also, O God, is very high. Who has done great things, O God? Who is like unto thee? Thy righteousness is very high. Look at Psalm 97, please. Psalm 97. Psalm 97, verse number 2. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. And then look with me in Psalm 119. 119 and verse number 142. Psalm 119 and verse number 142. Notice what the Bible says. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. You understand, God is righteous, and God has given us His standard of righteousness. And He's given us His standard of righteousness in the Bible, in the Word of God. We don't have to guess. Uh, you know, you don't, have to, you don't have to wear a bracelet that says, what would Jesus do? You can read the book and it'll tell you what Jesus did. And once you know what He did, you'll know what you ought to do. And it'll teach you how to live. This is God's standard of righteousness. And, and there was a day, by the way, the founders of our country understood that. They understood that this book was God's standard of righteousness. Let me give you some quotes. John Adams, the second president of the United States and a signer of the Declaration of Independence said, Suppose a nation in some distant region should take the Bible for their only law book and every member should regulate his conduct by the precepts there exhibited. Every member would be obliged in conscience, in temperance, in frugality, and industry, to justice, kindness, and charity toward his fellow man, to piety, to love, and reverence toward Almighty God. What a utopia. What a paradise this region would be. That was our second president of the United States. John Hancock, the first signer of the Declaration of Independence. And I heard today the only, the only one who actually signed the Declaration of Independence on July 4th. Uh, but he, and he signed it big enough so that the King of England would be able to read his signature without his glasses on. And uh, John Hancock said this, Resistance to tyranny becomes the Christian and social duty of each individual. Continue steadfast and with a proper sense of your dependence upon God. Nobly defend those rights which heaven gave no, and no man ought to take from us. James Madison, the fourth president of the United States, Cursed be all learning that is contrary to the cross of Christ. Our fourth president, John Quincy Adams, who is the sixth president of the United States. The hope of a Christian is inseparable from his faith. Whoever believes in the divine inspiration of the Holy Scriptures must hope that the religion of Jesus shall prevail throughout the earth. 
Never since the foundation of the world have the prospects of mankind been more encouraging to that hope than they appear to be at the present time. And may the associated distribution of the Bible proceed and prosper till the Lord shall have made bare His holy arm in the eyes of all nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. That, that didn't come from a preacher. That came from the President of the United States of America. And, and it, every, by the way, every one of those men would have been deemed today by Bernie Sanders to be not fit to hold public office in the United States of America. How have we lowered the standard down to man? And once again, listen, the, the, the need is to raise men back up to the standard. Amen? Say, what can I do? You know what you can do? You can live righteously. You can live righteously. You can follow God's standard of righteousness. The problem, with the Bible says when God begins to judge, God is going to start judgment at the house of God. God is going to start with His people. Remember, He said, Israel, if my people which are called by my name. And obviously that was a, a promise to Israel. But listen, we're His people. We are called by His name. We are called Christians. We bear the name of Christ. And how do we bear the name of Christ and not live by His book? How do we bear the name of Christ and in his, He doesn't impact our life to live any differently than those who do not know Christ? We have to live righteously. If we have His righteousness given to us at salvation, we need to live that righteousness out in our life. It's, I'm afraid where we are in America is where I saw this cartoon where a guy's standing up in front of a crowd of people. He says, all right, how many of you want change? And you see everybody's hand up. And then the next, the next uh, uh, column there of the, of the little comic was, how many of you want to change? And nobody's hand went up. That's where we are. How many of you want to change? Yeah, let's change. How many of you want to change? Oh, no, not me. I don't need to change. That's where we are. That's, that's, that's you know, we, we, I remember looking at a survey of people saying, well, how many of you think the public schools are corrupt and the public schools are state schools and the public schools aren't teaching them what's right? And boy, 90-some uh, percent of the parents said, yes, I believe that. But do you know what? When they said, how many of you think your school is bad? That your school is being run by the state? That your school has an agenda? Less than 5%. Oh, no, my school's okay. I got a good one. See? That's why Congress every year gets a what? Less than a 10% approval rating. But I think it's around 90% get reelected. How does that happen? You know how it happens? Well, they're all bad guys, but my guy's good. My guy's okay. And so we can look at America and say, yeah, the, the, this crowd ought to be changed, and that crowd ought to change, and this, these guys ought to be different, and they shouldn't do that, and they shouldn't do this. But we need to look at ourselves. Say, what should I be doing different? Am I, am I part of the cause of this? Am I living righteously? We need a return to righteousness in America. A standard of righteousness, and that standard is the Word of God. So we can make America great again if we return to righteousness. We return to the righteous standard of the Word of God. That isn't just, that's not just Baptist theology. That's what our country was founded upon. Read the writings of the founders. It's all over it. Number two, I believe we can make America great again if we turn from our sin. Sin is a reproach to any people. Reproach means disgraced. Reproach means to be brought low. Reproach means to be railed upon or ridiculed. It's what, it's what Goliath did to the armies of Israel. He was out there railing against them. He was being a reproach to the God of Israel. And David took exception to that and said, he's not going to talk that way about my God. And, and sin is a reproach. Because of our sin in America of murdering the unborn, 
because of our sin in America of same-gender marriages, because of our sin of immorality, because of our sin of pride, because of our sin of idolatry, because of our sin of calling evil good and good evil, Iran rails on us. ISIS terrorizes us. China mocks us. North Korea taunts us. Because sin is a reproach upon America. We have to turn from our sin to righteousness. We have to be willing to turn from the immorality. We have to be willing to turn from the class warfare. We have to be willing to turn from special interests. We have to be willing to turn from the entitlements. We have to be willing to turn from the progressive agenda, socialist agenda, and stand for righteousness. You've heard me say this before. I, I, I appreciate uh, the Vice President of the United States, Mike Pence, and, and I believe he's a believer. I believe he knows Christ as a Savior. And he would, almost every campaign stop, you'd hear a speech, he would always quote, Second Chronicles 7.14, but he never would quote all of it. He would simply say, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I'll hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. But he'd always leave out the last phrase. If I, it, the Bible says that they'll, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then... I'll hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. You have to turn from your wicked ways. America has to be willing to turn. That's what's hard. It's hard once, once you've given people everything. It was de Tocqueville, by the way, who also said America will, will fall when the, when the Congress learns they can bribe the American people with their own money. That's where we are. We're screaming with the, with the listen, there, there's one simple thing, and, I, and I, I know I'll make people mad today, so I'll just make you mad, okay? It's okay. I, I'm kind of used to it by now. And, but listen, they're all up in arms about this health care thing and, and repealing uh, the Obamacare and all that, and they say, oh, 22 million Americans are going to be uh, uninsured. No, there's 22 million Americans that the government isn't going to pay for their insurance anymore. They don't tell you that. And, and there's, there are Americans out there, by the way. There's some in this crowd, I'm sure. They're young. And, and by the way, when we were young, I didn't have insurance. You know what? I was young. I was healthy. I'm willing to take the risk. But I didn't want the government forcing me or have to pay a fine if I don't have it. Okay? And uh, that's, that's just, uh, th that it, is, it is not right. And what everybody's crying about is once you give somebody something, it's hard to take it away from them. Because now they're screaming bloody murder. They want it. The state of Illinois, as I talked to you this morning, the state of Illinois, where, where Kimberly just came from, they 100% of their tax income, of all their taxes that come into the state of Illinois, is now used to pay the pensions of state workers. What's left over for operating budget? Nothing. What about salaries? Zero. They went to court. They tried to get a judge to get them to allow them to cut down on the pensions so they could have money to operate the state. The judge says, no, you're going to pay 100%. They don't know what they're going to do. Uh, you can try to raise taxes, but they're pretty high anyway. They actually are talking about a plan maybe to divide Illinois up and Indiana take this part and Missouri take this part and, and, and divide it out into surrounding states. That's how, and by the way, they're not the only ones that are, that are in that position or getting in that shape. We're, we're in a world of hurt because sin is a reproach to any people. And, and it'll, it'll always be a problem. 13% of all births now are to, are to teenage mothers. America. You know, but we took... We threw away God's standard 50 years ago. Over 50 years ago now. We threw away God's standard. We said, we don't want God. We don't want the Bible. I read this week, I kind of had to laugh. The teacher saw a group of boys huddled in the corner of the classroom when she walked into the classroom. She went over to him and said, boys, what are you doing? And, and one boy poked his head up. He said, 
we're just throwing some dice here and gambling. She goes, oh, that's good. I thought you were praying or reading the Bible. <laughs> it's about, it's kind of funny, but it's pretty sad. Oh, the gambling's all right. Oh, throwing dice, that's okay. Just don't you go praying or reading the Bible. We wouldn't want that. But look at, look at our country and look at what we're dealing with. Look at the people who are, who are, who are killing others and, and wanting to hurt others. Road, the road raid incident, incident where an 18-year-old girl was killed. They're still looking for the guy. You say, man, what has happened? You say, why, why can't we just get along with each other? Because we're not right with God, that's why. If you're not right this way, you're not going to be right this way. The way to love others is yourself and love your neighbors yourself is to love the Lord your God with all your heart. You'll never get the second one right till you get the first one right. Love God with all your heart. America needs to get back to righteousness. Sin is a reproach to any people. If we'll return to righteousness, if we'll realize sin is a reproach to any people, then yes, God can exalt our nation once again. God can exalt our nation once again. Number three is simply that righteousness exalts a nation. Though men may try to take credit for it, we understand only God exalts a nation. De Tocqueville said America's greatness is because of God because of her churches, because of her Christian principles, because of the missionaries sent forth, because of the charity and the care for others in need. No other democracy has ever lasted as long as the United States of America. 241 years and we're still standing. He's exalted our nation throughout the years. And oftentimes, by the way, by the providence of God, I remember reading in the, in, the, in the history books about the times George Washington would come back and really the, the enemies, the, those in the, the, the uh, Army of England, were, were just shocked when, when they didn't hear that he was dead. And there were times he would take his coat off and there's bullet holes in his coat where he should have been dead. So how'd that happen? It just had to be God. And by the way, I, I think on June 14th when... That, that man went to the ball field with a rifle and with a handgun. And by the way, and, uh, something that he practiced over and over again, they found his spot in the woods where, where he was from, and they found the targets, and they found him practice, where, where he had hit practice shots. It's something this guy had rehearsed over and over. How in the world does he take aim at 30-some congressmen and, 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 and five are hit? And bullets miss it, but so many bullets into the ground. Not a guy who's practiced that much. Not a guy who's had that much aim. Not, not, he's, he's not going to miss that many people. How can he shoot that many bullets into the ground? Because God can just put those bullets right down where they belong. It, it could have just been the providence of God. The, the, uh, the God protected some of those men. There just as easily could have been 30 people killed that day. You ever think what that would have done to our Congress? Suddenly 30 of them are wiped out. I think divine intervention. I think if we exalt righteousness, God will again exalt us as a nation. But you have to be willing, Christian, to make your voice heard. We no longer can be a silent majority. Number one, we aren't the majority. And we can't be silent. How many of you are old enough to remember Phil Donahue? Does that name? Yeah, quite a few of you. You younger people, Phil Donahue, uh, you younger people, you, you people, uh, you are maybe 35 and younger. How many of you know Maury Povich? Does that name sound familiar? Maury? Okay. Uh, who else? Uh, I'm trying to think what other knucklehead there are. Um, Jerry Springer, do you know that name? Yeah, some of you younger ones get him. All right. Well, Phil Donahue was, was the forerunner of those guys. Donahue was on television for 28 years and nearly, nearly always at the top of the ratings until 1992 when a Fort Worth dentist, Richard... 
kneel, began a one-man crusade against the content of the program. I mean, he had back then, back then, he had the homosexual marriages, he had a mother-daughter team, so to speak. It was, it was horrible stuff. Eventually, as Neil began his crusade against the content of the show, by contacting the sponsors, eventually 221 advertisers quit advertising on the Donahue show, causing his revenues to decline. Donahue tried to clean up his act in 95, but his ratings fell even further because by that time other guys started coming on the air with their trash. And while he tried to clean up, people quit watching him and they started watching the other garbage. By 1996, he was off the air. But he was off the air and he cleaned him off because one guy, one guy said, that's wrong stuff. It shouldn't be on the air. There are things I heard, it, I heard people talking the other day on the radio and talking about uh, one of them used the word C-R-A-P on the radio. And he said, you know what? When I started in radio, 40 years ago, I got a letter of reprimand for saying that word on the air. Now, how many of you know they say a lot words a lot worse than that on the air now? And not even blink an eye. Hmm? We have to do our part in our community, in our circle of influence, to promote righteousness. Sometimes I know we look and say, man, it's such a big country. And it is. There's so many people, and there are. And you know, when you, when you look down, you think, we're this, we're this little speck here. What, what are we going to do? We can only do what we have in our circle of influence. And we have to try to influence our world where we live for righteousness. It's like the old man who's walking along the beach at dawn And he noticed a young man ahead of him picking up starfish and flinging them back into the ocean. Catching up with the young man, he asked what he was doing. He, he said, well, I'm getting these starfish back into the ocean so they're not left to bake in the sun. The old man said, son, this beach goes on for miles and miles. There, there's probably millions of starfish laying here. How can your effort make any difference at all? The young man said, it will make a difference to this one. Make a difference to this one. He said, man, it's so big, preacher. The country's so huge. What, what, what's it going to do? Us doing our, you know what? It could make a difference to somebody. And if you'll make a difference to one, and I can make a difference to one, and you can make a difference to one, and you can make a difference to one, we'll make a difference. We'll make a difference in this world. If God, if God would spare Sodom for ten righteous people, wouldn't he spare America? If we could get ten righteous people? I don't know, I don't know what the number is for America. But I don't know. I, I sure would like to see God make America great again. But America can't be great again if we're not if we refuse to be godly again. You won't have good without God. It's an impossibility. We studied in Genesis this morning in Sunday school about Noah. And we talked about it in Noah's day. And it's ironic, isn't it? The Lord Jesus said as when he talks about the days when he'll return, he said it'll be like it was in the days of Noah. The thoughts and imaginations of man's heart were only evil continually. Or were there. And, and it would be just like those days. As it was in the days of Noah. And Noah, uh, Noah preached righteousness. Noah did what he could in his generation to, to stand for truth. And he got, eight, he got seven others besides him to believe it and to get into the ark with him. And I don't know what, what God's number will be for America, but I know this, we need to stand for righteousness. And we need, to make, we need to make America godly again. 
and God will make America great again. But let's, let's remember, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, I want you to take the truth this morning. And Lord, I pray that each of us would look at our own lives and that we're living a righteous life. That we're living by the standard of righteousness, which is your word. The Bible isn't just a book we read or something that we reference. It, it is what guides our life. It's what controls our thinking. It's the guideline by which we live. And I'm praying, God, that once again we would return to righteousness and your standard of righteousness in our country. Lord, all we can do is do it in our own individual lives and ask you to help us to influence somebody else to do the same. I pray that these young people in this room would, would once again know the America that I knew when I was a kid. And Lord, certainly I didn't know the America that my grandfather knew when he was a kid. We've been sliding down the wrong way for a long time. God, I'm praying you'd help us, use us to turn this thing around before it's just too late. Help us to exalt righteousness. Help us to turn from our sin. And may you exalt us. May you lift us up to influence others for Jesus Christ. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'll finish praying here in just a moment. I wonder how many folks here this morning would say, Pastor, I there's a time in my life when I knew I was a sinner and I knew I needed a Savior and I knew Jesus was the Savior I needed. And there's a time in my life when I called on the Lord Jesus and from my heart I asked Him to be my Savior. And Pastor, I know that I'm saved. I know that Jesus Christ is my Savior. If you ask me uh, what I'm trusting in to get me to heaven, I, I would tell you I'm trusting Jesus Christ alone. And if that's your testimony this morning, would you put your hand up and say, Pastor, that's me. I know that I'm saved. All right, you may put them down. Is there somebody here today who would say, Pastor, I don't know for sure that if I died, I'd go to heaven. I don't know that I've ever placed my faith in Jesus alone as my Savior. Pastor, pray for me this morning. Would you slip your hand up for a moment that I may see it? Is there somebody like that today? I'm preaching to save people today. Righteousness exalts a nation. There are enough saved people in America to make a difference in our country. There really are. Now, will we exalt righteousness? Will we live righteous lives? I wonder how many folks today would just say, Preacher, God has spoken to my heart that I would influence my circle, my my world in which I live, where I live, where I shop, where I work, where I go to church, the people in my area of influence, I want to live righteously. I want to exalt righteousness. I will forsake sin, for it is a reproach to any people. I don't want to be part of the problem in America. I want to be part of the solution. Pastor God has spoken to my heart today. Please pray for me. Would you slip your hand up, Christian? Yes. Amen. Amen. You may put them down. That's the only way we'll ever see America be great. Let's ask God to do it in us and through us in the days ahead. Father, we thank you for speaking to our hearts this morning. Thank you, Lord, for decisions that have been made already in the hearts and lives of people. And Lord, I pray now in the next few moments that we would respond to what you've told us to do. Some would come today and bow the knee, and we just ask you, Lord, for help, that we would live righteously in this present world. We would do what we can in our lives to exalt righteousness. 
and you will exalt our nation. God, I pray that we would turn from sin, seek your face, humble ourselves. And I pray you'd hear from heaven, forgive our sin and heal our land. We love you, Lord. And I pray that there'll be some bended knee this morning and we would take the time to ask you, as the choir sang to open the service, that this would be our prayer, that you could bless America again. But Lord, help us each to do our part. Have your way in this invitation now. May each of us do what you're bidding us to do in our heart. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, the pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob's going to sing an invitation hymn. God has spoken to your heart. You come while, the, while she plays and he sings. That's right. Have thine own way, That's right. Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, O oh power. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only always. Our Father in heaven, we bow before you in prayer now. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Thank you for the admonition that we've looked at today. And I pray, Lord, we leave this place and you would keep this in our heart. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. May we take that as a nation. May we take it personally in our own lives. And I pray that we would always keep first and foremost in our heart righteousness that we would live out the righteousness that you have given to us in jesus christ that others would see our good works and glorify our father which is in heaven help us to influence others for christ and for good and for god help us to stand up stand up for jesus as soldiers of the cross lord we love you we love our country we don't like the direction she goes. We don't like the things that have happened. I pray that we would stand up and call her back to righteousness. Lord, I pray your blessing now on each individual, each family, and give us a good Sunday afternoon. Bring us back this evening for the evening service. And we'll thank you for it. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing, I'm so glad I'm part of the family of God. Remember tonight, 630, right back here, uh, Roman Gray will be with us. It'll be a great service together. Don't miss out on that, all right? We'll look forward to seeing you this evening. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Brother Bob? 
I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join us with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. Amen. You're dismissed. We'll see you tonight.